Hey guys, Dave Dean here. Uh, just doing a video in the daylight. Uh, all my other videos were uh, at nighttime. Uh, so just kind of going to go over my system again. Uh, I guess you know what? We'll kind of start with uh, my source unit. So if you watch the other videos, you kind of know my source unit is a Fio M11. And uh, I run coaxial digital um out of that there's a coaxial digital cable right there and i run that to the back of my system which i was just showing you there uh i got the amp rack in the back there and uh, this digital cable obviously runs into the back into my helix dsp ultra um so that's my main source unit i have four different options with this so If I'm running coaxial digital, you'll see right there, we got the spiffed out for that. So if I'm gonna go basically optical on here, then I gotta switch over, like right now it's on coaxial digital. So I'll go into the menu. I'll go into unused functions. We'll go to input select. And then as you can see right there, we got it on uh, digital coax, right? So if I wanna switch over, then I'm just gonna hit digital optical, right? So basically right there, sorry. It's hard to see this and recording at the same time. So yeah, I'll switch the, uh, the digital volume always stays maxed out for mine. So that way when I switch over to inputs, the only thing I'm doing is controlling the volume level. That's it. So anytime I, I, I use that for anything, I'm uh, switching over. So I'll go back to the menu, uh, unused functions, input select, switch it back to coax digital. As you can see, the digital volume, max, subwoofer is always whatever you set it at, right? Uh, so then you just, it's all touch screen on the, the Helix Director. So if I wanted to use uh, switch the volume on the sub or whatever. I just do it like that. And then basically go back to volume, adjust to whatever I want. Mute, you basically just hit it, punch it in, mutes it, punch it again, unmute it. Um, so that's that's uh, the one input. Basically when I'm using this, which I'd say 99.9% .9 of the time I, I do use it uh, because it gives you the best sound quality. So I'm basically using uh, the DAP, the FIO M11 as a transport device, uh, digitally, right? So I have a 512 uh, gigabyte um, micro SD card in there. So I can store, you know, thousands and thousands of songs. Right now, I think I have like 7,000 something songs on there. Um, I got high res on there. Uh, I got lots of iTunes songs. I got lots of uh, um, CDO or CDs. Uh, that I've uh, ripped uh, losslessly or lossless uh, on the computer. Uh, I usually use J River. Um, that's pretty much what I use to convert everything. Um, you know, uh, HD tracks and stuff, it's already on there, so it makes it pretty easy. So that's why I bought most of my high res stuff before. Um, and I've used a few other uh, sites too for high res. I don't really download that much high res now anymore uh now that i have title on here um just because it's pretty much most of the stuff that's going to come out is usually going to be on there anyways and I, I already have most of the high-res stuff that i wanted uh before um so yeah right now i haven't downloaded all my music yet uh, because i just actually got this card i just actually got this player probably like what a month ago i guess and I just basically got, uh, bought the card, yeah, a month ago or whatever. Um, so I haven't went in and transferred all my music. So I got, I got about 7,000. I mean, in reality, if you could be going on a long trip and you're driving or something, you know, and you're driving all day or whatever, you're not going to listen to thousands of songs. So, uh, it's, it's nice to have the option to have your whole library on there though. And, uh, one thing you want to note about these file players um, is 
the uh, if you're gonna go analog, go with the the one up from this one. Um, go with the file M11 Pro uh, because the it's got a better uh, noise floor on it. With all the all the reviews I've read, that's that's one of the main things about the the Pro. And I was gonna go with the Pro originally, um, but then after research and everything, we found out this was the best way to go for the best sound quality is going through that way. But that being said, if you want to switch it over to optical and you want to build a control your volume level on here, uh, then basically that's pretty much what you do. I'll just show you one more time. So you go into here, you go into the menu, go to unused functions, go input select, and then you're going to switch it to optical, right? And then down here, uh, if I had my uh, CarPlay on here, I could just do source select, and then I just put it to like, that's my CarPlay on here, like USB, but obviously I don't have that hooked up because I got the phone in my hand. Um, so basically I could do uh, XM, and, th and then you control your volume on here. When I do that though, I'm gonna set my master volume. I'm gonna go all the way up. I got it muted right now, so you're not gonna hear anything, but um, I'll put this crank all the way to the, the max, and then on here, because that's what it's set for in my system. Um, that's what basically it's tuned for. And then I'll go in here and I can control the volume level with, uh, you know, your factory uh, controlled volume level. So that's, a lot of people might like this, doing it that way. The sound quality is still really good uh, that way. Uh, I would just say it's it's better because in, in the manual, uh, in the DSP Ultra manual, uh, if you're going to analog, um, it's 111 uh, signal to noise ratio. And if you're going digital, it's 117, right? Um, so pretty much if I want to do that with the optical, like I said, I would change this spiff. Uh, I would go in here and I would just, basically I'll show you. I, just, I would click that and it's, you'll see it switched over to uh, PO. Like, uh, and then if you want to get it back to digital. So right now, I'm not going to use this cord though. So I'd have to switch my cord, right? So right now I could go auxiliary in down there, or I actually, I have another cord that I can use that I plug in and it goes straight to the DSP analog. I'm going to tell you right now in uh, sound quality, uh, I can't hear the difference between going auxiliary input and if I run my other cord uh, into this player and go analog straight into uh, uh, the Helix DSP. Like I switched it back and forth, played like tons of different songs um, and I couldn't hear a difference. Uh, you can you can hear definitely hear a difference if you got the digital if you're going coax in though um, But going the other way when I'm using the analog input and I'm using the DAC out of here um, It sounds different and uh, You can play all if you're going analog into the D, uh, helix DSP you can play uh, your DSD files you can play um, uh, If you got music that's encoded higher than uh, 24 192 you can also play everything that way. If I'm going digital, I can only do 24, 192 max. And then if I'm using toss link, uh, if I'm doing toss link, then I can only go 24 or 96, right? That's as high as I'm gonna go on here. If you try to play um, anything that's higher than that, a lot of the time it's gonna be all staticky and glitchy. Uh, it's gonna be messed up. The signal's basically gonna be messed up, so. Um, I run it like that just because that's, that's the best way to do it is coaxial, uh, digital in. Um, there's not a lot of DSPs, honestly, that have coax digital in. Uh, there's a few out there. I know, I know, uh, JL's only got, like almost all of them have, uh, toss link or the optical in, right? Um, but very few have the coaxial digital. Um, so if you want, if you're right into high res music and you want 24, 192, um, or higher then, well, if you want 24, 192, then you need coax digital or you got to run your DAP. So 
this is a great dap because the screen like a lot of people last on kerns like the high end right there's other companies out there uh sony makes a pretty high high end uh, version uh of their dap too um there's like tons of tons of uh was it uh um i don't know i'm drawing a blank on some of the other ones but the most popular high-end one is astral and kern and if you watch matt schaefer's videos um the dap he uses in almost seems like all his installs for the most part that he that he shows anyways on his youtube channel he uses the sp2000 which is like a five thousand dollar dap <laughs> so the da uh, digital audio converter uh in here is the it, it's uh it gets, it's got dual digital analog converters uh one for each channel um these these really good dax and these things so the sound quality is really good when you're running it through uh analog right um so like i said when i switch between digital and analog like if i'm going uh analog input it still sounds amazing still sounds really good um and then you then you do have your uh factory volume that you can control everything with which is easier obviously it's easier than me coming up here and changing my volume on here right and this is a little bit of a you know but once you've went you know it's a little bit of a distraction right because you don't have your uh, full rear view mirror here you can't see everything right um that being said it's, it's pretty easy just to come up here and adjust to a volume because i usually listen around 15 14 for the most part uh, sometimes I'll crank it up to like 10 or minus eight. It depends on what, what music you got. Right. But, uh, you can just, once you, once you put it away, you put it away, right. It's done. It's out of the way. Um, and for the most part, I don't have to adjust it. Um, it's not like I have like, you know, I'll have like some old 70s songs mixed in with some brand new, like, I mean, sometimes I do, but very rarely when I make a playlist, it's usually, um, a lot of the times you already know the recordings of the songs you already know how it's going to sound like for the most part so i kind of group things together if i'm listening to older music i'll put a lot of i'll do like an older music playlist that way i'm not really adjusting the volume much and it, kind of that's how i used to do it anyways right um if i was used to like led zeppelin or some of the old rolling stone stuff or whatever i would basically just make a playlist of all that kind of music because if i'm in the mood to listen to that type of music i'll just do a whole playlist right of that type of music and that way the volume level is pretty much going to be the same on all of the all the music that you're listening to at that time and then you don't really have to make any adjustments you just set the volume level up here you know what i mean click it and then the way you go you're just driving around or whatever but uh, uh some people they do prefer using the volume level on here and then you know what if you know you're just going to use this and you don't want to bother going uh, the digital coax you can still use the optical right if you're using an amp pro uh, that's pretty much what i got going on here anyways right so um, if that's the way you want to do it then don't even bother going with a coax cable there was extremely hard to find took me like almost i don't know a week or two to find this cable long enough um i was trying to find an audio quest cable because my other cables are audio quest my toss link cable and everything else is audio quest um even on my old system I have this this guy right which was like uh i don't know how much i spent like 100 bucks or 150 bucks or something like this on this one um it's just not auxiliary in cable right that's what i was using before because i was just using my auxiliary in on my in my old vehicle so like i said um i have another audio quest cable that i i use it's got like the y splitter on the end that goes straight into the tsp for my analog and then this thing just comes up and pops into there just like the other one so like this cable and then i just switched on there um but uh either way you're good um is it the end of the world if you're not running coax digital no but do you want that option for me yeah because for me it's i'd rather have the best sound quality and sacrifice a little bit with the volume up here that that's me but like if i'm gonna buy stuff i want the best sound quality i can possibly get out of the products that i bought so um and and the only reason why i uh had all the different so basically you can hook this thing up six different ways so i showed you the coax digital 
Uh, I can switch it over to optical. Um, I can run it coax, or not coax, but I can run uh, auxiliary in here. I can run um, the basically analog out into the straight into the DSP, right? Um, and then the other two ways, if you wanted to, um, you could buy the module for the Helix for the Bluetooth. Uh, it's like Aptex, uh, Aptex HD or something like that, I think it is. Um, this does LDAC. Um, unfortunately, the Helix DSP doesn't have that, but I'm not, I'm not a huge Bluetooth guy. I, I'm really not. I like to be directly connected to everything. I've always been like that. I don't, unless you're at home and you're just like, whatever, you got a yeah, Sonos or whatever that you're listening to or whatever, but um, then I, I don't know if Bluetooth is okay. Like, you know what I mean? But uh, um, I'm a direct connected type of guy. I think you get the best sound quality over there. Uh, I don't, I've, I've even, you know, you see people that debate, oh, Bluetooth is like, you don't notice the difference and it's got the same sound quality. Uh, no, <laughs> it doesn't have the same quality. Uh, not, it, and chances are it never will. Maybe, maybe, maybe it will then down the, down the road or whatever. But, um, as of right now, I don't think so. No matter, no, no matter if you're using LDAC or not, it's, uh, directly connected is always going to give you the best sound quality possible. Um, so yeah, so I showed you the back, uh, I showed you my amp rack there. So I'm running, uh, once it goes out to the Helix DSP Ultra, um, what's running my, uh, GB10 tweeters is two of the channels on the AS 100.4. So two of the channels run the tweeters and then two of the channels run the GS 62s that are in the rears, right? They're behind the doors. I can't show anything on that, but, uh, that's my rear fill. And originally I, I kind of wasn't even going to go with rear fill. I was just going to do the three ways up front, but anytime you add a mid, um, if you don't have a factory location for the mid, uh, you're going to be looking at spending a fair amount of money. Like, uh, uh I got quoted on my eight pillars. It's, it's, more than likely two days, maybe longer, right? To do the A-pillars on this thing. And um, uh, depending on where you get it from, I got a couple, I went to two different places that I I thought was the two best places in Alberta. And uh, so basically one one place was like 80 bucks an hour, right? So you're looking at what, six, 680 bucks per day for labor right and then whatever materials and stuff like that they're going to use so you're i'm looking at you're looking at probably two to three days probably i'd say more like closer to the three days to do the eight pillars so you probably i'd say you're looking anywhere from around 1500 bucks somewhere like 15 to 2000 somewhere around there if you're going to do that so that's not that's not cheap right 15 if you're spending another 1500 bucks that's without even the mid right so um you get depending on what mid you get uh for me i'm going with the gb 25s uh which are probably around 600 bucks here in canada um roughly around there plus your taxes or whatever on there but uh you're getting into you're over 2000 right probably more than likely you're gonna run around 2000 uh to have that installed and then, of course, they're going to have to do, we got to run the speaker wire to the back. I should have got them to run the speaker wire when I did this. So then it was ready to go, but uh, we didn't. Um, but yeah, that probably should have did that because now everything's going to have to get taken apart. But that's okay because you know what? When they take it apart, uh, I'm probably going to do some sound denning at that point in time anyways in the back. So we'll probably hit uh, uh, kill two birds with one stone when we do that. Um, so I, in reality, I would have to, tear off half the back anyways to sound in it so we'll just do that at the same same time um so yeah so i got the moscone as 100.4 uh tweeters two channels to the tweeters two channels to the rears uh the as 200.6 is running the gb60s um and i should say they're getting the tweeters uh, tweeters about 110 watts and the rears about 110 watts. Uh, I got the rears dialed down. The gain's completely off on my amp for the tweeters. 
and it's actually even less um, inside the DSP. It's dialed back too on the tweeter. So, and then uh, yeah, so the GB 60s, it's getting a little over 200 watts um, because it's the AS 200.2. That's all they're running, or are the GB 60s? Um, and then the subwoofers, the Helix. Uh, Q10Ws, um, that's getting um, I don't know. We'll, we'll just call it 1800 watts because that's that's what it's rated at the amp. The AS the AS uh, 300.2 is rated at 1800 watts. Um, it's dialed way back. Um, I have it like my, a lot of the times I'll have it like minus 10 to 12 on here. And then on the actual DSP and the software, it's actually dialed back another minus 12 dB on there. Um, is to, it, honestly, it was to, I just wanted the headroom. To me, I don't, I'm not a base head. Uh, you know, I used to have systems that did, uh, had one, actually two systems that did over 150 um, back in the day, back in the 80s and 90s. Um, but I was always more of a sound quality guy. Um, you know, and if you put enough wattage, even, even to a couple tens, like this system probably hits like this system will hit over 140. Um, pretty easy actually. Uh, but I, I'm not into that anymore. Right. I, I, I like the base to, to, to blend in with the system. Right. Uh, I don't, I, I'm not one of those guys that I need the base to like overpower everything. I don't, I don't like when I go into a car and I sit in there, and pretty much all I hear is bass. I just, I don't even want to sit in there anymore. Um, to me, it's all, all it's, it's all about the music, the vocals. Uh, I, I like bass, don't get me wrong, I like bass, but I, I like it to blend into the system perfectly. I don't want it overpowering, you know, my components. Um, that's just how I am. That's, that's how I've been for quite a long time now. So, so that's it. The the three hundred point two runs the two tens. The two tens, uh, the, the Helix ones, they're rated at seven hundred fifty watts RMS. They can handle a ton of power. Those things, um, and even though I have the wrong enclosure, um, that was the closest off the shelf subwoofer box I could get um, that matched up to the specs as good as possible. Was that Atran ported box? Because, uh, like I said, after I'm going to be doing some custom work. Uh, once, once we do the A pillars in here and I sound dead in the rest of the back of the vehicle, um, at that point in time, then yeah, then we're going to figure out a place for the subs. And, uh, I kind of want to stay ported cause I like the sound of ported. Um, but we'll see, we'll see what kind of space I got left. Uh, might have to go sealed. Uh, those, those subs sound incredible sealed too. So. Uh, in fact, that's how a lot of people usually do them anyways, is sealed. Um, and I got plenty of power, so I'm not, I'm not worried about that. And like I said, I don't need to go crazy loud with the subs. Uh, but I still, I still have always kind of preferred ported box over uh, sealed. Um, one of my favorite subs of all time was actually years and years and years ago, the uh, Pioneer Premiers. Uh, I'm not a huge Pioneer guy, uh, but... Uh, the PRS line that they brought out with the nice head unit, uh, the PR, what is it? The PRS 99 something or other. Um, all the, all that, that whole line that they brought out that year, was probably the most expensive, uh, stuff they ever brought out, but that was by, that was by far, I think their best line that they ever did. Um, and the sub, they, it was only a 12 inch sub and, and it came in a sealed box and, uh, it sounded I thought it was one of the best sounding sealed subs uh, that I've ever heard. I think uh, uh, I'd say of all, of all time, right? For me, I, I think that thing was like, sounded really good. Um, obviously since then they've had like tons of good subwoofers that came out, but that was the one that just kind of caught my eye back in the, I think it was the ni early nineties or something. I think that came out from what I remember. Um, but these Helix subs sound sound wicked in a sealed enclosure too so if i have to then uh to, to create space because i want to get uh uh i need like if i'm going camping and stuff like that i don't want to have that sub box 
in the way. Uh, so that was like a temporary thing. Those boxes are cheap anyways. It's like 150, 200 bucks or whatever. So I'll, I'll just sell it or whatever. Uh, somebody's always looking for bo subwoofer for boxes anyways, right? Um, I'll just sell that, get rid of it uh, when I'm about to do the custom job in the back. Um, so the, yeah, and then going back to this thing, like I said, I'll sw switch it back. You got line out, and then we switch it back to the spin. Um, one thing I want to mention on here, and I'll actually uh, go to it. Uh, let's see. So to the title, title app. And I'm just gonna get a little bit closer here so you guys can see this. A um, little short story with the title. Uh, I downloaded title a couple of years ago. Uh, back when, back uh, once I finished my uh, Hertz, when I did had my all uh, Hertz melee system. Um, I was on, I think I was on PS Sounds so I was back then when I when I did that system I was on YouTube and I was like searching all the stuff I could find on stuff. Um, anyways, I ran across a video that uh, Peter from PS Sound was doing, and he was talking about what he uses. Uh, he uses the title app right for his music, and on a recent video that he just did too as well, um, one of his sound quality videos that he does. Sorry, I just turned the turned the air conditioning on so it might get a little louder in here. It's friggin' hot today, which is good. It's a good sign because usually it, uh, uh, we're, you know, it could be snowing at this time of year in Edmonton. So I'll, I'll take the sunshine uh, any day. I think it's what do we got? Plus eighteen out, so it's a nice day today. Um, so, anyways, yeah, I was watching Peter's video and one of the sound quality ones that he just recently did. Uh, I don't know, a month ago or two months ago or something like that. Um, he was talking about music and minimum requirements he's talking about cd quality right um that was like minimum if you're going to do anything in your system minimum use cd quality um that's that's pretty much what he said so to me i kind of disagree with that um i'm an apple guy and and i'm not going to tell you itunes is is, is high res because it's not high res right obviously it's not high res um, but I'm going to tell you right now, so I have a title on here. I have high res, um, from HD, uh, tracks, tons of high res music and from other, uh, websites too, as well that I've, that I've bought. Right. Um, and then I also have the iTunes version. So I have about three to four different versions of the exact same recordings, um, on here because I spent a whole entire day, actually a couple days. Uh, I'm anal when it comes to like sound quality. I'm trying to get the best of the best that I have for what I'm using. So I'm trying to get the best sound quality possible. So I'm like, you know what? If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna download Tidal and I'm actually gonna pay a monthly subscription, um, which I don't really like. Uh, the only thing I, I like, you know, is Netflix, right? When it comes to monthly subscriptions. But everybody seems to be going that way for everything out there. And the thing I don't like about it is because you never own it, right? You never own the music. I like to be able to buy something um, and own it. And the thing that I hate about HT Tracks is you have to buy the whole album almost on it. Not on everything, but almost every single album out there, you got to buy the whole album, right? Well, I might not like the whole album. Um, and it's not like you're going and buying a vinyl record or whatever, and it's it's kind of like you're collecting you're a collector right um digitally you, you don't get that same vibe from it you know what i mean so to me it's like i'd rather just download the songs i like and unfortunately it doesn't give you the option to do that um you got to buy the whole album right so a lot of times i'll only buy um the high res stuff that i really liked the majority of the songs on the albums right um um and that's the nice thing about it. You know, I mean, you can use Spotify, all, all that kind of stuff, right? Whatever, whatever your choice platform is, or your streaming platform, or whatever. I don't stream Apple Music. I just actually went on there and bought the iTunes songs themselves. But I've been doing that since it came out, right? For years and years and years. So I have a huge collection of iTunes songs. But I also had a huge collection of CDs before that, right? Um, 
and then you basically just convert it, right? So I converted pretty much everything to uh, um, to FLAC, right? Obviously, it's not going to be the same quality if it's not recorded in FLAC, and you convert it to FLAC, right? Uh, but it's lot lossless, so you can do uh, um, when I'm doing like iTunes songs and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, it's not going to make them better, <laughs> but that's the conversion method that, that I use, right? Uh, but if you're doing CDs, yeah, I convert it to I convert it to FLAC um, through J River, and then I put them on here. But yeah, so I I, I kind of disagree with them because, like I said, I've heard I got like you know four or five different like, songs, the exact same songs on here, and when you switch them back and forth, and I'm even talking even high res, right? Like 24, 192. Um, and I know it's supposed to give you more dynamic range. That's, you know, kind of like one of the purposes of high res audio. Um, you can debate, you can debate whether, you know, the sound difference, um, especially if you're, you're going up to CD quality, but honestly, even with iTunes songs, especially like ones that you're buying, you know, the last few years, you know, the ma mastered in iTunes or whatever, and you're comparing them to like a CD or high res, you could blindfold a guy and you could list, get them like, get like 10, 20 songs, right. And play them. And I can almost guarantee you they're not going to notice the difference because I, I consider myself having really good ears. Um, and I'll get to it. The story that it, as soon as I installed my GB sixties in here. So basically once my system was done, um, the first song I listened to, I knew there was an issue, uh, especially on this side. All right. So I had to, everything I thought I, I had to go through my whole entire system to figure out what was causing this noise. So the noise, it sounded like either something was rubbing up against something. It sounded like it was like something was blown, but I knew it, I knew it wasn't blown because the mid range of the speaker sounded incredible. But when certain songs played certain notes, it almost sounded, and not so much on that side, but on, on my uh, driver's side, it sounded basically like this, almost like a speaker blown. And I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> I knew that that's not right, but I heard it right away. And then, then when I uh, drove home and I was listening to music for like a while longer, um, I was just like, yeah, there's something wrong with this thing. So basically I just went through my whole entire system. I, I was like, well, I wonder if it's the app, something wrong with that app. So my, I had my AS 200.2 running them. Uh, I switched to my AS 300.2. Uh, and it was still making the same noise. So I'm like, okay. So it's not the amp. The amp's good. Um, so the next thing I do, and I'm like, I wonder if it's something to do with the crossover. So I switched to different, instead of Lake Quince Riley, I put it on Butterworth and I kind of went through there and I'm like, nope, still making the exact same noise. Well, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to move my crossovers up, right? I moved to the crossovers up. Nope, still making the same noise on the exact same songs. Um, so that's when I started switching my inputs to on here. Okay, I'm not going to go coaxial digital. I'm going to do optical. Nope, same same thing. So anyways, I went through pretty much everything you can go through. Eventually, I hooked my DAP straight into the amp because I knew the amp. There was no issue with the amp. Uh, so I used the DAP, went right into the amp, set the crossover at uh, 80, and uh, listened to it. Same thing right away. So, okay. So I know all my equipment was good. So there was something either wrong with the speaker or the install. Um, so needless to say, I emailed, uh, Andy from audio frog and I was like, uh, and I was actually dealing, I asked Doug originally, cause I thought maybe there was something wrong going on with the DSP. He's like, no, they haven't had any issues or any whatsoever with any of the Helix, uh, ultras. Um, and that was Doug Dobson, great customer service from both, uh, Doug Dobson, um, for Helix. And of course, Andy from audio frog, Andy messed, uh, emailed me back. Um, right away um, and he told me check to see if there's either something uh, pressed up against the speaker so basically like the door right or something's something's like on the back hitting the back of the surround of the speaker so anyways needless to say as soon as they popped the door panel off the surround was like pushed in 
not like pushed in, pushed in, but you could tell it was pressed up against, right? So basically when they installed the GB60s and they put the door panel back on, it was pushing against the surround. Not as much on this side, but on the other, on the other side, on the driver's side. Um, and that's the one you were noticing it the most on. Uh, it was pushed up on there. So anyways, they had to recess the, the door further in um, in order to uh, basically fix that issue. And that's that's what the problem was, right? Like exactly what Andy said. And I kind of figured that's what it was anyways. I figured out that it almost sounds like something's, something's rubbing up on there or something and causing distortion. So anyways, yeah, that's that, that was my system. And that was like the first uh, week I was driving around. I don't know if I made any videos or anything. I think I might've made a video of one of the, well, no, actually maybe I didn't. Um, but uh, that was it. So if anybody ever does, has a Jeep Grand Cherokee and you're looking through those audio frogs in there and you're making uh, templates for the six by nines to the six and a half audio frogs, make sure you kind of, uh, make sure you kind of recess it in the speaker. Uh, you know, probably minimum like half inch, probably. Um, you got lots of room. You don't have to worry about your, uh, you don't have to worry about your, uh, your windows, right? That's not a big deal. You got plenty of room so you can, you can uh, push the speaker back a little bit in there. And that way you're not going to have that issue that I had. Um, I spent like, Ooh boy, I spent pretty much an all, almost two days trying to figure out what was wrong until I finally figured out that's what it was. So anyways, it's kind of like food for thought. If you ever, if anybody ever buys and buy any vehicle for that matter, just be aware of that. If the speaker doesn't sound right and it sounds kind of, uh, you'll know, you'll know right away if it doesn't sound right. Right. Cause it's, these speakers are crystal clear if they're installed properly. Um, and like I said, the whole, the doors are all dynamat. There's dynamat on the whole entire door. There's fast rings in there. Um, there's this other type of material. I forget the brand name of it, what it's called, but it's like a spongy foam type material. That's, uh, um, kind of, kind of around the door locks and stuff like that. So there's no rattle whatsoever. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I knew that what I knew it wasn't that right. So it had to be the, we knew it was the speakers, the installation of the speaker. That was the problem. Anyways, that got fixed and these things sound like perfect. Um, since then, uh, there's no, no issues whatsoever. Um, and that's pretty much it. So that's, that's pretty much my system. Oh yeah. Well, I got off track like I always do. So I was going to show you the title thing. So yeah, when I, <laughs> sorry, I, I kind of like go off on these tangents here. So anyways, with title, uh, where are we at right here? So go into title. So when I originally downloaded title, and one of the guys in the made the comment too, like the other day, uh, when I originally downloaded title about a couple years ago and I thought it was crap, um, because my iTunes song sounded better. The reason my iTunes song sounded better, um, well, they were louder, but the reason why they were louder, um, and they still sounded, I still say they sounded better, but in reality, we know they don't sound better, but, uh, um, the reason I thought that is because when you download this app, it has loudness or loudness, sorry, normalization turned on. It's off right now. If you have this thing turned on, which is the way it comes when you download the app, everything, all your music is going to be really low. <laughs> Anything you're listening to title is going to be extremely low. And you can be like, what the hell? This kind of, kind of sucks, right? Uh, it doesn't sound properly. It, it, it really doesn't, right? So once you turn this off, then it's like, boom, everything's crystal clear. It's at the right volume levels again. It sounds great. So yeah, I'll have to say so, sorry to Peter there for a couple of years ago. Cause I kind of, I'm like, that title sucks. Like, I don't know why everybody says this is high res and blah, 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 blah. Uh, it sucks. I listen to my iTunes songs and they sound better. All of them do not just some, all of them, but it, it was because this loudness normalization was turned on. <laughs> So everything's, it's like, I don't know how, how much DB of quietness you get from doing that, but it just doesn't sound right either. I found it just didn't sound proper on my systems. 
Um, so once you turn that off, yeah, then you're going to get the recordings like, because I down, and when I'm using Tidal, everything's like offline mode. So it's like all the downloaded songs on there. Um, that's how I use it. I don't stream anything on here. Um, it's all like in offline mode when I use it. So once you get that setting, turn it off, everything will sound normal again. Um, I just figured, uh, um, you know, if, if one if one guy didn't know him, there might be lots of guys that don't know, right? And you could be listening to your system the whole time and it's, you, it might not sound as good when you have this thing on, so turn it off. Um, other than that, I kind of went over pretty much everything in my system. Um, and the only, like I said, the only thing I'll be doing in the future is getting the uh, Audio Frog GB25s installed and the A pillars. Um, and then uh, do some more sound ending in the back, which I already, I already have all the material for that. It's just actually going and doing it. And then, um, then this vehicle will be uh, complete. Although right. well, the only other thing that I was going to talk about this, I might just keep it up here. Or the original plan was to flush mount it here. So to move those uh, USBs out and the auxiliary input and the other stuff to come out here, flush mount the Helix Director there, uh, still so I can close this, and then flush mount it out here with these. And I just find like, you know, the volume, having your volume knob here was a little easier than having it up here. It's still, this is really not that big of a deal. I've heard a couple of people that I've had these up in the same place where I'm at. And they said it was kind of a little, little irritating for them because it's just blocking your, you know, it's blocking it, right? But uh, really not that big of a deal, really, uh, for me. Because like I said, a lot of the time I'll just adjust it and I'll snap it up. Although the biggest issue for rattling in my whole entire system is this. So when I do put it up, and I go pretty loud listening to you. This rattles. Which is friggin' irritating, right? Um, this is the most irritating thing in my system right now is this rattling. So a lot of times I'll leave it down anyways. And it doesn't, it'll, it might rattle a little bit, but you don't notice it nowhere near as much as when you have it closed. That's at really high volume levels though. Um, so yeah, so just to kind of go over my system again, I got a 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited X. Um, this is the vehicle I always wanted. Uh, well, in fact, the SRT originally was the vehicle that I I wanted, that I was going to get. And uh, I almost did actually buy the SRT um, until like two years ago, like I said, they found out that these Limited Xs were coming out and it's got the same hood right as the srt and i i love the hood on these things i kind of gave you like at the start of the video the the look of it right uh and then and this they've had the similar style with the jeep grand cherokee for quite a few years now i think it's the best this is my personal opinion obviously people buy their whatever vehicles some people don't like suvs they like you know sports cars i used to be a sports car guy before um once i got an suv i was like never going back you know what i mean uh, unless I, unless I get rich from my online business, which is basically, I don't work. I have an online business. Uh, I make, I've been doing it for about two years now. I make about 10 grand a month, um, doing that. My coach, uh, coach in the business, basically everybody's assigned a coach in our business. When you come in, you get a coach. Um, I'm actual coach now too, but, uh, originally when I came in, my coach, she makes between a hundred and two hundred thousand dollars a month in the same business I'm in. Um, like I make 10 grand, 10 grand's good, right? I get up, I do whatever I want, whenever I want. The freedom of having a business and you not having to, you know, have a nine to five job or whatever is the best feeling in the world because you're, you're free to do whatever you want, right? Um, so if I ever get to the point, and I'm going to tell you, most of her money's bonuses, right? So um, they have days, they have days where they've had like almost, well, some people above them have had like 300,000, over 300, well, what was it, $360,000 days <laughs> where they go in there, they have these, they get these 
their checks for their bonuses and everything. This is just bonuses checks too, right? Um, uh, over 300,000, that's, that's somebody that's been doing the business for about four and a half years, right? That's the leaders of our community. Uh, but Michelle, my coach, she makes close to the same amount of money. She's been doing the business for about two, uh, two and a half years, a little over two and a half years. Um, and she's had like over $200,000 days where she gets her quarterly and monthly bonus. And I'm just like, oh my God, if I ever get to that point, I can buy whatever I feel like. So everything in this vehicle, if it wasn't for my online business, I wouldn't have this vehicle. I'd still be driving my journey. Um, I wouldn't have had any of this audio stuff in here. <laughs> I would have just kept my five channel amp that I have. I, I mean, I was good with it. I was, I liked it. I love my old system. I thought it was great. I was just passive, right? There was no DSP or nothing in there, but it sounded really good. The, I, I like, I personally, even though the Hertz gets bashed on the, on the forms a lot. Um, I love, I love the, the Hertz, the old 1650.3s. Um, I mean, do, do they have as much mid bass as uh, the, the GV60s? No, but I mean, it was still decent. I thought it was decent for the power that I was putting in there. Um, it did the trick. There were clean speakers. Um, I could listen to them at high volume and it sounded great. I love the ML280s. I love those tweeters. Those are, those are awesome tweeters, right? That was my favorite part of the speaker was the ML280s, uh, the tweeter. I never had the the ML seven hundred mids, uh, but I heard them in like four or five different vehicles, um, and they sound great. You know, everybody said the weak link was always the the sixteen fifties, but I don't know. I thought I thought they were good. Um, that's 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 just my opinion. I thought they were a good speaker, a decent speaker, and um, I just want to say for the guys that live in the states, apparently Hertz charges quite a bit for their stuff in the states. Well, here in Canada, like depending on where you go, you go to Visions or whatever, they're on. You can pick up the sixteen fifty point threes for nine ninety nine, thousand bucks here, can't Canadian, right? Um, that's a pretty that's a pretty wicked deal if you're looking at, um, you know, a higher end speaker trying to get into the high end. Obviously, they have all their other different uh, lines, Hertz too, right? I don't think their lines now are as good as what they were. Um, the melees now are nowhere near as good as the original melees, but they're like, those were like three times the price, right? And came in a suitcase. <laughs> those were like, that was like a high, high end speaker. So it, they shouldn't be as good, but they're still a good speaker. They're still, still a great speaker, speaker. And that, and like I said, I, I love the 280 point, uh, the 280.3, the MLs. They're, they're a great tweeter. Um, but I would be, I would have been perfectly happy with that system still. I, I enjoyed the music. It sounded great. Um, you don't get the same effect that you do with the DSP, obviously, but uh, uh, it's, I've heard them. I heard them with DSPs and stuff before. You still get the same sound signature anyways, whether you're going passive or active, you still get, you're going to hear the same, um, like what that speaker does, the sound signature of it, it's still going to be there, right? whether you're going passive or active. Um, active is just dialed in right to you, right? Um, and you can get rid of some of the frequencies that are causing issues uh, with your DSP and stuff like that and set it to exactly how you want it, right? And then you're, and then especially with the time alignment that you're getting, you're getting that sound coming to you at the exact same time. So that's the nice thing about having a DSP. Um, but yeah, back to that. Yeah. If I ever get to the point where I'm making like 50, even if I get to like 50 grand a month, you can, I can buy whatever the hell I want at that point in time. Right. Um, so we'll see what happens in the future. Uh, there's people make crazy amounts of money in this business. Uh, we, we advertise and stuff on social media, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Google ads. Uh, we do LinkedIn stuff to like, pretty much you name it we do it uh we get you, you get trained in everything on that but anyways that's i'm getting off topic we'll get back to the car audio stuff um so yeah that's that's all i got left in the system we'll, we'll put the mids in there um i might actually order them this week but i'm probably not going to put them in for a while um originally i was going to get a mobile solutions to do them they make they do incredible stuff out of calgary uh, probably still going to do there. And that's the, one of the reasons I didn't get them to didn't do them now is because basically they're backlogged for a couple months. 
So if you want to, if you want to try to get something done with them, you're looking at like minimum at least two months from now. Right. And I didn't want to piss around driving down there because in two months from now, it's going to be snow everywhere. Um, in Alberta. So I didn't want to piss around driving down there and the, drop my vehicle off for like three days or however long it's going to take, uh, for them to do that. Right. And I'm kind of like a, uh, I like listening to music on days like this where it's like blue sky. The weather's nice. You know what I mean? You got your, uh, you got your windows rolled down and all that kind of stuff. And you're going on a trip or something, going somewhere, right. Which we're probably going to do in the next week, me and my spouse. Um, going to go down south there to uh, I think watered and lakes and check that out for a day or two uh, and then come back um, probably next week hopefully the weather's still at least if the temperatures like this will be great if it's still like 18 degrees out that'll be awesome <laughs> um, so that's probably next week's plan so uh, we'll just listen to music the whole entire way down there and the whole entire way back um, so that's that's kind of like that's fun for me I, lo I love doing that I love traveling uh, a lot of people, they just like to fly and go wherever they want to go. I like to drive. <laughs> That's why I got a nice system put in here. I love, I love to listen to music and drive. Uh, and I can drive all day long. I don't get tired of it. Especially if I'm going somewhere. If I got somewhere that I got to go. Uh, if I'm going to see a, like a waterfall or whatever. I got a destination where we're going to, you know, it's exciting. We're going to go see it. Um, yeah, I can drive. I can drive all day long. Um, my spouse hasn't been to Vancouver Island for where I'm originally from. Uh, we want to go to Long Beach and stuff like that. We were going to go this year, um, but just because of the chaos with uh, COVID and stuff, we're like, you know what, let's just go next year. Uh, cause she hasn't seen anything if she wanted to take, I, I was raised, born and raised in Victoria, BC. So that's, um, originally where I'm from. So she hasn't been there. So I'm going to go take her over there and then we we'll go hit Long Beach up and, uh, Long Beach Tofino. It's awesome. It's probably my favorite beach in the world. I've uh, been there like hundreds of times. Um, it's amazing. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, car audio. You, you can get you can get that car audio bug. And, you know, back in the 80s and 90s when I had that car audio bug, I had it for years and years and years and years. And you can spend a lot, a lot of money on car audio. Um Cause you're like, what if I do this? What if I, what if I change these speakers though? And I go with the higher end ones or if I, Oh, the, you know, I got like a $500 amp. I'm going to get that $1,500 amp or $2,000 amp or whatever. You know what I mean? It's never ending. And usually when you go up the sound quality part of it might improve a little bit. Right. Uh, we've all been there before. I used to be like that when I was younger. Right. They used to have like the single din decks. Every year, um, pretty much every year, the companies would come out with their top of the line decks. I would always get whatever the one. Back then, I used to actually, Clarion actually used to make pretty decent decks. I think it was like the 9255, I think it was. Um, so they originally, they had the one that you couldn't, you couldn't pull out of your system. It was just, and most of the faceplates used to come off. On this one, it didn't. Um, and they redid that as a special anniversary eventually. So that was probably their best deck that they ever had and I originally had that and dummy me the next year it came out I think it was like these ones with these dolphins on there so that was the excitement back then they'd have these little pixelated like you could pick out of like five different things that you could see on there and it was like if you looked at it now you're like holy shit that's terrible um but I remember the clarion had the ones with the dolphins on them and it had like five or six settings that you could preset it to and I bought that one still a wicked sounded really good but compared to, I think it was the 9255, 9255 was like the best one they ever made, right? Um, for Clarion. Um, but Alpine had like the F1, what was it, the F1 status or whatever it was called back then. Um, Eclipse used to make, I think they used to have, was it eight volts? They used to have the eight volt decks back then when everybody else was doing like uh, uh, two, to four, two to four or two to five volt or whatever it was. Um, and then eventually Ken would obviously start getting bigger back in the game back then. Um, but yeah, it was like Alpine. It was still like the same kind of guys that are around today. Obviously, Clarion's not there anymore when it comes to the car audio stuff, but, uh, um, not really, not, yeah, they're not really like they were before, right? I don't even know if Clarion's doing anything anymore. Um, 
but they used to actually i think they got bought out but they used to they used to have some decent stuff back in the 80s and like early 90s uh well, yeah, Pine, well pioneer their premier stuff was great uh that was the best stuff they ever did um but that certain line i forget that like with the prs 90 99 whatever it's whatever it was uh those that certain stuff that they brought out then that was the best stuff they ever brought up um and then uh of course Al- alpines always had their stuff but f i think the f1 was probably the their best stuff they ever brought up and then uh what else yeah like you can go crazy with car audio stuff uh uh going back to the comment somebody max max made a made a, made a comment um um a couple days ago on my video it basically came in uh and said audio frogs are decent speakers um what was it uh he brought up what was it the utop the utopias he brought up which i've had i've had two i've had two different models of the utopias before not the utopia m's but i had the utopias before them and i had the original utopias like 20 years ago or whatever it was when they came out um, when I was in BC, I was like the first people, first person to get them in BC back then. Great. They were great speakers. They're good speakers. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say they played, they played certain music really, really well. Um, and other music they played, yeah, they played it good, but I've, I don't know. Um, I heard, I heard, I heard better. I, I've gotten better speakers than that. Those, those were expensive. They're probably the most expensive speakers. Um, that I ever bought, but expensive doesn't always mean better. Um, I'm trying to remember the brands that, uh, he was talking about. There was, he said the utopias, which I've already had. Um, and he said, uh, what the hell was the other one? Something, the something gold, gold version that, uh, I know a lot of people do use that brand he was talking about. Um, and I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. <laughs> In the other video I did, I mentioned what they were, but, uh, um damn what what the hell were they i can't i'll probably remember in a bit um what what happens when you get old you start forgetting shit um but anyways going back to the high end stuff he he basically said it was night and day like if you listen to the uh to the utopias and you listen to the other brand that he was talking about um it was like night and day difference over the audio frogs and i'm like you you're ridiculous man (laughs) you're the are you trolling right now? Because you, you obviously don't know car audio if you're saying any brand is night and day. When you're going into the high-end stuff, like these audio frogs, like I said, uh, they're around, for me in Canada, they're about two grand, right? If you're going to get the three-way system, that's without the crossovers, just a la carte. Uh, they're about two grand, right? Roughly, give or take, going up or down or whatever. Um, that's high-end. To me, And once you get into like 1,000 plus or whatever, uh, that's a high-end speaker, right? Um, like, and, the, and and then he's saying, oh, night and day. And it, it basically, he, he starts it off. You know how they people like Con and Zen kind of thing? They start off with like, what's well, a decent speaker? I mean, the audio frogs are an incredible speaker. They're not a decent speaker. They're a freaking incredible speaker. Um, go on the forums. <laughs> go on the DYI, what is it? DYI uh, mobile audio site. Go on there. You, you, you tell me that anybody that's going to say anything negative about the audio frogs. There's nothing but great reviews on them. Some of them they've they've had the speaker. They, they, it's the same guys have had the speakers. This guy's talking about right the Utopias and uh, and like I said, I'm drawing a blank on the speaker that he was saying. Um, um, but I do I do know a lot of people do use those speakers as well, um, and people that compete and whatnot, but it's night there's there's no such thing as night and day difference if he if he heard audio frogs that weren't tuned properly in whatever vehicle they might not sound that great but any speaker if it's if you're using a dsp and it's not tuned properly and you don't have your your vehicle sound deadened yeah it might sound like not very good it might sound like crap right it's the, the people it's like where do you get this where do you get where are you getting this night and day what do you what are you what are you doing to what tests did you do on this vehicle first of all what's the vehicle that you heard these in um 
that sounded so much better. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like, we need facts, not just these speakers are decent, but these speakers are way better, right? Night and day difference. Um, no, every speaker has got a different tone to them and a, their own thing, right? They sound a certain way. They have their sound signature. Every speaker, even in you go with Hertz and you go from their basic models all the way up to the, the Melee Legends, right? They all have a different signature sound to them, right? Same thing with Focal, right? If you start with their bass speakers and you go all the way up into their Flax, into their uh, the K2s, and then all the way up into the uh, you know their, their Utopias, they're all going to sound different. They all have their different sound signature and it's like that with every speaker there's no such thing as the best there isn't there if if a certain speaker was the best every single person would have them in their car that competes <laughs> they'd have all have the, if there was a certain speaker it's like that's the best speaker they would all have them they don't they have all kinds of different speakers from all kinds of different manufacturers and all sometimes they have a different woofer, different brand woofer, a different brand mid, and a different brand tweeter in their vehicle. Everything's different, right? Um, there is no end-all, be-all best. It's what's the best for you. What do you like? So if the guy would have rephrased his comment said and said something like, oh yeah, the audio frog, frog speakers are good, but I prefer the Moscones and whatever the hell the other brand that he was talking about, which I can't remember right now, um, because it has nothing to do with price. And I know the speakers he was talking about, uh, they're an expensive speaker, right? I know they're over like two grand, three grand or whatever they are. Uh, I know they're more expensive than that. But when I was aud auditioning speakers, I was with Larry down at Mobile Solutions. They have Brax there, right? So they have the two two versions of Brax speaker. Um, they're both more expensive than my audio frogs a little bit. Um, not a lot. But though they're high end bracks, so they have like the matrix, the the graphics, right? The graphics one are like their lower end ones. I actually thought those sounded actually better than their high end ones on the demo board. But like we already know, demo boards you're only going to get so much from that. You got to listen to the the speakers in a vehicle, right? Uh, multiple vehicles if you can, um, and then ones that have a DSP in that are properly tuned and the car sound deadening and everything else, right? Uh, the gains are all matched properly but on the board i actually preferred the lower end like out of everything i heard all the blam speakers and everything that he had on the board to me i liked the graphics speaker the best that's originally what i was actually going to go and go for um they're close to the same price as the, the audio frogs those ones uh maybe they're a little bit more expensive than the audio frogs like a couple hundred bucks maybe more um but, and I, like I said, I bought the audio frogs blind. Uh, since then, I heard them in other, other, another, in one other vehicle. Um, but uh, I bought them blind just because everybody, and I mean every single person on the forums, were talking about how great they were, um, how it's got they got the best customer service, and they do because I've already experienced that. Helix and audio frog incredible customer service like Doug, Larry um, and then Andy with Audio Frog sent him an email they repl like reply right away and Andy's the owner of the company what what owner do you know out there you think you think Focal the owner is going to uh, if you got an issue or something with something you think they're going to you're going to email them and you're going to get a response back from the owner of the company <laughs> good luck good luck to you on that one um so like customer service was phenomenal. Um, it just makes you, you know, you, you did the right decision. Like, well, like I said, when I had that issue right off the bat after I installed the speakers and Andy's like, just check this, this is probably what it is. That's exactly what it was. Um, you feel kind of good, right? You're like, I made the right decision. Had an issue, the issue's been corrected. The owner of the company responded back to you. You know what I mean? Um, but speakers, there's no such thing. You people buy, people buy speakers for a certain reason, right? And and unfortunately, with car audio, you're always like, what's the next, the next greatest thing out there? 
Um, sometimes the old stuff is better than the new stuff too. So you got to be careful with that kind of stuff, right? I've made many mistakes back when I was younger, when I was like every year I was switching out stuff. And um, I'm going to tell you right now, back when I ran the old ZR kicker amps, that was probably the last year they brought out high end amps, right? Uh, I can't remember what year the Warhorse, War, War Horse came out, but uh, the ZR amps where you plugged in the modules, uh, that was, they had a high signal to noise ratio for back then. Um, that was one of the best amps they ever made. And then they kind of went, you know, then they got into like the whole Walmart and put their, put their stuff everywhere, right? But that's why they probably, they sell more. If you go on Google and search what company sells the most in car audio, it's Kicker, right? Um, pretty much every every year they because they have their stuff everywhere um and then their lower end stuff sells well but uh when you when you're going into like uh uh you know like i said some old stuff is better than the new stuff i've i've got an Audison vrx 6.420 with all the crossovers and everything in it right that was like a four thousand dollar amp when it came out I have a brand new one at home that was supposed to go into this vehicle. Sure, the power rating is there. It's a six channel lamp. It's it, it doesn't it's it's about seventy five to eighty five watts per channel, right? For the six channels, yeah, the wattage is. It's not like if you go get a Zapco uh, AP six channel amp and you got one hundred and fifty watts RMS times six, right? But that's a great amp. Anyways, like I wouldn't really compare those two amps, but uh, I'm just saying that's kind of a higher end amp that you can get now. Um, that's a six channel as opposed to the VRX one, which is a six channel, right? Um, but those are like, like it's a, it's an incredible amp. I couldn't use it in here because you can't defeat the crossovers in it. See, if I would add the direct version, then I could have, but it, uh, I don't. I have the one with all the crossovers and modules built built into it, right? That's how it came, and. Uh, so I'll probably just use keep that as an antique. <laughs> Maybe it'll be worth like, you know, 40, 50 grand or something, another like 50 years or whatever. Give it to my kids or whatever. They can hold on to it and sell it at some point in time. Um, or who knows? Maybe I'll just put it in my put it in my spouse's vehicle. But you can't. I can't use a DSP with it if I do that. So I'm probably not going to do that. Um, but I would have loved to just hear it. Uh, that was the plan as was to put it in here. But um, it is what it is. I'm happy with what I got. Uh, right now, uh, but you, you, necess, new is not always better. That's kind of like the point I'm making at. Um, it should be, but it isn't because you got to remember these businesses are always trying to think of ways of uh, cutting costs, right? So, and it's like that everywhere. You see it, uh, you see it in vehicles. You see it in a lot of things where sometimes the, the original ones that they brought out had better components and better everything in them, and then the businesses try to find ways to make things more money for them because <laughs> everything's a business so that's a nice thing about the audio frogs that's the sp first speaker that they brought out with right and a lot of the times you'll see in the car audio world when a new company comes in they have to bring a break a great product with them otherwise they're just gonna get eaten up right because they don't have a name at that point in time they have to build their name and blah 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 um so a lot of the times you'll see in products that was like the hertz the hertz the original melees best speakers they ever made right it was an expensive speaker, but that was the best speakers they ever made. Um, and honestly, like once you get a good, really good speaker like that, do you really want to upgrade? Are you really going to gain anything from it? I I personally wouldn't. You know, if I had the original Melees in my vehicle, um, I probably would have just kept them, right? It's, there's not, they sound awesome. There's no point. There's no point in getting another speaker at that point in time. Unless you got money to burn and you just want to have another new system and you buy a new car or whatever, there's there's no point. Because um, you're not going to eat... I don't care what you put in there. If you if you got a speaker like the old Melees or you got these like audio frogs or you got like the, you know, the Dino Audio SLRs or um, even the Morel Elates and stuff like that. If you got those already, there's really no point upgrading to another speaker unless you're going to get a new vehicle or you're doing your spouse's vehicle or you got a kid and you're going to do a, you know a system in there or whatever um there's really no point to do it i don't think um to me i'm i'm done what these are done once i might i might, might put the mids in there and then that'll be the last thing i do in this in this 
car. I'm, I'm done after that. There's no point. I'm not going to be like I did when I was younger. And, oh my God, you know, Moscone just brought out a new, well, they brought out the pro amps before, right? Which I, I love those amps too. But, you know, like Zapco just brought out this thing new or that thing new. Nothing much changes really. Like when you think about it nowadays, right? Um, in car audio, n- n- a lot of things haven't really changed in a lot of years, right? So the integration part has changed huge, right? Um, in the last like five years or so with the DSPs and stuff like that. But other than that, a lot of other stuff has pretty much stayed the same other than things have gotten smaller and, and, and kept the same kind of power ratings and stuff like that on there um, with, what, with some of the class D amps and whatnot. But other than that, not a lot's changed. So um, I could switch out some, like if I switched out amps in here, I'm not going to know, honestly, if it's the same power requirements. Like if I, if I put in, um, cause I've heard them before, like the zero amplifiers and whatnot, uh, Moscone's amps, like the zero three, zero, what is it? The zero one, zero two or what zero three or whatever it is. Um, I've heard those amps before. Great amps. Once again, great amps. Um, are you going to hear a difference? I don't, I don't think you would because especially when you're using a high end DSP, the sound signature is going to be the DSP is the one that's going to be doing it with the, the digital audio converter in it. Right. Uh, and obviously the tuning part of it and all that kind of stuff. So I don't think if you're using, if you're using the exact same wattage, um, in amp, once you get to a certain level in amps, you're, you're really, I, I personally don't think you're going to notice much of a difference in amps. Obviously speakers, you're going to notice a difference in and your DSPs, you're going to notice a, a little bit difference in obviously, um, if you go and and you went, you went with like, say, uh, what's a cheaper DSP out there? Um, the DSR one, right? So if you went with that DSP and then you went up to say like an audio control or the Alpine piece or whatever, uh, you're going to notice a difference. And the same thing, if you went from like the Alpine to like, say the Helix, I think you're going to notice a difference because the signal to noise ratio is a lot higher, right? Um, that's not the end all be all. But you got to think like, and not everything, if you pay more money for it's better. I'm not saying that, but there is certain things where you, where you do pay more money and you get what you pay for kind of thing. And I, I think Helix is one of those DSPs where you get what you pay for. You know, the Helix DSP Alter was two grand here in Canada, but I got what I paid for. You know what I mean? And now that I've had time, I've had the system for a few weeks now. I've been able to fool around with like the majority of it uh, now, except for some of the new features, which I'm going to do in the next week or two. Um, and do like a new tune for those just to see what it sounds like. Um, but other than that, it's, you, it's, a, is it expensive? Yeah, it's expensive. That's all kind of relevant to what you're doing. What, if, you, if you're working, how much money you make, that kind of stuff, right? What's expensive to one person isn't expensive to other people and so on and so forth. DSP Ultra, that's expensive. Uh, for me, <clears throat> two grand is like, I had to really think about that, right? <clears throat> Same thing with these audio frogs. Spent a decent amount of money on them. You got to think, like, I could have just put my melees in here and I would have been happy. <clears throat> but for me, I always, like, ever since I started researching stuff, I wanted to try the audio frog. So, <clears throat> and that's one of the reasons why I didn't go with the Brax when I was down in mobile solutions is because I wanted to try the audio frogs. Like, <clears throat> and now that I've tried them, I'm glad that I picked the audio frogs. Would, would the Brack speakers sound good in here? Sure. They will. That sound awesome in here. I've heard them down there. I know they sound really good, <clears throat> but I'm happy with the choice I made. I, I love these speakers. I recommend them to, to anybody. Basically I, you do a video. Cause you, like I said, you can't find stuff on car audio. Um, especially different, like search, go search audio frog. You, you barely find anything on them really, you know, on YouTube, you can't find hardly anything. You can go to the audio frog, uh, Facebook page and stuff like that. But, um, then you're just seeing like pictures and stuff like that. You're not, you're not seeing anybody talk about anything. Right. I don't get the car audio world. You have all these plate. You're seeing a little bit more with people coming up with the YouTube channels, all these play. I was telling Larry, I was like, you guys should be doing 
you do like all kinds of fab fabrication on the high end, you know, Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Porsches and all these high end vehicles down here. You guys should be doing YouTube videos on your stuff because it's going to build your business, right? But uh, some people they just they don't they don't want to spend the time or whatever doing doing that type of stuff. But if you look at Five Star, um, I guarantee you they've had tons of business just based off their YouTube videos. Everybody wants to come in because they know Dean and Fernando do an excellent job of installation, right? Uh, zip tie and a million zip ties. <laughs> on like all their vehicles that they do you know if you you know if you take it there you're going to get your system done correctly properly uh you don't have to worry about anything i'm going to tell you in edmonton here some of the places that you take your vehicle to you're going to worry about what what kind of job they're going to do i'm just going to tell you that right now um and uh why would you want that right you can see the video of his work he's doing he he puts the same amount of effort in all his vehicles he does why wouldn't you want to get it installed there? You know what I mean? Um, and then obviously uh, he's got his names and stuff like that out there too, right? So um, they show all kinds of products. They answer thousands of questions. Uh, just like regular people that are just getting into car audio. Um, they answer pretty much all the questions right there. You can't, you put all the videos in there. It's got it, the information you're going to get from them. is just incredible. That's why they're the best channel out there. I like I like sound man for entertainment and stuff like that, but there's no the knowledge that you that you get from like if you look at it as like a new person coming into car audio, um, five star with Dean and Fernando best channel and and then uh, I'd say uh, car audio fabrication that one's those two are like great channels. Um, there's like PS Sound is PS Sound's really good. Um, but once again, the, for information wise, still think five stars the best out there because they just show so much and they and they have they they show all the product even stuff they don't carry right they'll show they'll do uh, the DSP go through the DSPs um, they don't go through everything but I mean you don't really need to go through everything right uh, when it comes to that kind of stuff um, but yeah so anyways I've been rambling on for a while now. Um, doing this video because I'm going to replace in the video that I just did. So it's going to be, if anybody's watched that video I just did, I'm basically going like this with my knee the whole time because I was listening to a really good music before I got in the vehicle and started uh, doing the video. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to get rid of that shit. Um, what's his name? Noticed it right off the bat. Can't remember. He's got the Boston uh, Boston Bruins logo on there. He's the one with uh, the Zapco and the Hurt stuff. Wick, wicked system. Um, in his vehicle, you know, it's right here. He's like, what are you doing? I don't notice you're like this thing's rocking. And then if you're looking at the trees and stuff like that, you know, it's not really that windy. So what the hell is going on in your car? Right. And it was just like me going like this, like the whole time I've got my knee shaking. My car's like rocking. It's like, who wants to watch a video? I mean, you don't see anything anyways. It's basically, I'm in the same parking lot or whatever. Right. To, um, but he wants to watch the vehicle go rocking back and forth like the whole time that you're watching the video listening to somebody talk. So anyways, I could go on and on and on and on and on. Uh, I'm going to do that DSP video pretty soon. I'll probably just use Loom to record that because it's easier on the computer. Uh, but I don't know because you, then you go into the demo mode. But I mean, you can pretty much show the same kind of stuff on demo mode. But I don't know. We'll see. Um, maybe I'll just bring the laptop in here. One thing to note with the Helix before I go. So once you, once you, uh, download all of the software updates and everything, you got to download the software updates for this too, as well. Once you get everything installed, anytime you can hook your laptop up, it always goes in the connectors, like right on the side right here, right? Like right in here. So basically I got this Velcroed in, I bought this really strong, uh, Velcro for indoor outdoor use. I got this on the back so I can actually pop this out and then I just connect it on here if I want to make any adjustments. So all the adjustments going forward, connects to your uh, director which makes things easy so that's why you got to be aware of where you're mounting it to because you have access to that so that's one of the nice things about having it up here is i can just i'm not going to do it now because it's it's pretty tight right let's i forget how many pounds this velcro holds up to. it's like 15 pounds or something like that it's, it's pretty heavy duty velcro but this will just snap off and i actually need two hands to do it because i don't want to like i wouldn't want to break this but um, it just snaps off. I can, I can get it to go pretty easy because I've did it quite a few times now. 
and then you just push it back on again afterwards so it's actually it is kind of pretty convenient having this here for that that purpose if you're ever doing any kind of tuning it's really easy to get get into there when you pop it out um if this was somehow you i'm sure if everybody that gets this done in the vehicle whether it's like down here in another vehicle or whatever i'm sure they already know that so they can obviously it's going to pop out somehow uh but anyways that's kind of one of those things to know if you don't have helix and you're thinking about going helix um uh, that's one of the things on there but uh, i'm gonna do the video in the next probably week or so going in that i'll try to go into much as much detail on there as possible because like i said i've watched um i mean you can only go so far anyways right because obviously i'm not going to do the video with uh the room uh, eq wizard and stuff like that there's enough videos on room uh room eq wizard out there that you can just use that because that's what everybody the majority of the people that if you're going to do the tune and stuff yourself they'll buy the mini dsp mic i forgot the model number of it you can search it on amazon or whatever it'll pop up i think it's canadians about 150 bucks or something like that 150 200 bucks whatever it is and then uh use uh the free program uh room e uh, eq wizard uh rue and then um then you do all your calibrations with that right and then at that point in time you can make then you can go in and make all your adjustments to the tsp i'm not going to show you that part of it because there's tons of like i said there's tons of videos out there on that part of it but i will go through like the dsp is on as many things as possible one of the things i can't remember if i mentioned in the other video i did mention the one the video i'm actually going to delete with me shaking my legs the whole entire time i did the video but one of the things i'm going to mention if you want subwoofer volume control as soon as you get these dsps it comes standard you have to use uh channels i think it's k and l it's the last two channels uh of the outputs basically if whatever your amplifier is that you're going to hook up have to go one of those two uh outputs if if you're not using the virtual what is it the virtual channels so it comes standard like that so because i found out the hard way because i had g and h as my subwoofer outputs originally and then went up here and i hit subwoofer nothing changed right i'm like what's, what's going on is there something wrong with that you know what i mean because they don't tell you in the manual at least i didn't see it in the manual anywhere um they did they did actually say in the manual about the using the coaxial digital and the optical you can if you have the director um i can't remember if it said the wi-fi though in there the wi-fi uh, controller on your phone um, but yeah, you need the director for that part of it. But that being said, um, G and H didn't work for me and I had to go, I, uh, emailed, um, Doug Dobson and he's like, yeah, cause it's come standard. So you have to actually either go in the virtual channel, channel, uh, processing, uh, if you want to pick whatever you want kind of thing. Um, and you have to enable that. I believe I'm going to have to go in there because I, I didn't actually do that myself. I just went in and I switched the subwoofer outputs in the back of my vehicle and on the DSP to the last two outputs, which I believe is K and L on there. And then uh, once I came in there, it was, yeah, it worked fine after that. But just remember that anybody with the DSP, use the last two outputs for your subwoofer um, if you want to control your subwoofer volume on the director itself. Um, but I'll go and I'll probably mention that again, probably on the video when I'm going over the DSP. I'll try to mention as m many things as I can that I think might might help people that other people didn't. Um, when I watched, I watched every video on the Helix DSP before when I was thinking about buying one. And uh, um, it's the same software for other models, anyways, right? So, and anyways, the the version I'm using, I think it's uh, is it, I think it's two point four or 3.4 i can't remember now but i'll do it in the dsp or 4.6 yeah i think it's 4.6 is the they have a beta version out which i'm not using but the the regular uh version is 4.6 i think in the software and that that's what is uh going on in my vehicle right now that's the software version that i'm using um so yeah i'll do a video on that one and try to go into as much detail Setting the crossovers and stuff are pretty basic and stuff like that, but I'll try to go over as much as I can just so there's an updated uh, video out there 
Um, I'm sure a lot of those guys, because I know, I think it was Nick and Doug that did a couple of videos before, and I know Nick did some videos on his own. Uh, they don't go into like super detail on some things, right? And I know with Nick's video that he was doing, and you think these guys, like, not Doug, but the Doug only did like one or two videos, I think, with Nick, but when Nick was doing them, you know, he doesn't explain a lot of the stuff that's going on. Maybe they do that because they want you to go there and he can tune the DSPs and stuff for you. I don't know. It just be might be one of those things. But I was watching his video and he was doing a Jeep Grand Cherokee. And he was setting the one where he's setting the gains and the battery things dying on his uh whatever he whatever he had the um I don't know if it was the Steve Mead one or whatever, but uh uh it was dying on him and then he was getting his buddy to do the volume control on here and he said oh it distorts at 30 or whatever on the jeep grand cherokee that he was using um he was setting the levels on there but the one thing he doesn't because it's different if you're using and, and i'll go into this on on the dsp when i do it um if you're going he was going high level high level in that vehicle right so the process of doing things is slightly different if you're doing that aspect of it right um it's not the same Right. As if if I'm using if you're using digital, I don't have to go in there and set the input gains individually on the DSP. So inside the DS, DSP Ultra, Helix DSP Ultra, they have individual input gains. But that if you that's if you're going analog or high high to low level or whatever, high level or whatever you're doing in there, like you know what I mean? Like whatever option you're using, if you're doing that, anything analog, basically you have to set the input gains when you're setting your gains in the DSP itself. So you have to pro, you have to pop it open and they have individual channel gains inside the actual DSP, right? Um, so that's the thing. When you're doing, you have to kind of explain that. And if I was, you know, I'm trying to think of like, if I'm trying to get a video out there that explains things to people, you should be, exp you're an installer, you should be explaining this stuff unless you just don't want people to know. And I've, uh, you know, maybe the installers only give you a little bit of information because they want you to come to them to tune their system, um, which is great. Is that's if you want it? Obviously, the guy's does lots tons of systems. Um, he knows what he's doing. I'm just saying, in some of the videos out there that the, he does, and some other people do, they're not really great for the guy that wants to do it themselves. Um, I would say they're okay. You know, they're just okay and whatever. But I would have explained the process. If, he, if I was him and I was doing it, I would have explained it. This is for high level, right? Right off the bat, the video I'm doing right now for this DSP is high to low level or whatever that you're using, right? Um, he's not, he wasn't using an amp pro. I have no idea why. <laughs> That's the first thing I would thought of. Like, why the hell isn't he using an amp pro in this thing? It's a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Why are you going high to high, to, high level? Like, I don't, I don't understand. So to me, I didn't even understand what the hell was going on there. You got a Jeep Grand Cherokee, you're using an AMP Pro, like guaranteed right off the bat. That's what you're doing, right? Or you're using, if you're not, you're going to use an AMP Pro and you want to take out the factory AMP, um, then you're going to go the other way. You're going to go with, uh, uh, what do you call it? Not, what is it? Not Pack Audio. It is uh, iData, right? iData Maestro. So you're going you're gonna to use be using that or if you're changing the, the head unit right then you're going to use iData as well right um so to me I, like even when i watched that video i was like this guy's an installer you go you want you know if you go to D dean and, and them they'll tell you right away like if your vehicle is set up for like an amp pro or i our data or um you know any of the any of the other ones there's like five different five different ones out there uh that can integrate in your vehicle the proper way rather than using like an lc what is it the lc1 or whatever the hell it is with the audio control uh high to low level or whatever um don't use those use the amp pro use the iData. use some of the other ones for like the german i forgot the one for the german video, uh, vehicles or whatever that's what you use. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Right off the bat. If I seen somebody, a video and stuff, then I see a Jeep Grand Cherokee. I'm like, oh yeah, Amp Pro, all the way Amp Pro, right? And I see a guy that's doing it 
and he's going to high level. And I'm like, what? What are you doing? Right? I don't get it because it's not like it's the price difference is going to be much of a difference going from um, buying the audio control piece as opposed to the amp pro there's not you know what i mean and the amp pro is going to give you a better cleaner signal <laughs> so anyways i'm going to go off topic again on here and this video is getting to about the, 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 what an hour and a half now it's pretty much what it was before but i'm just saying there's a lot of videos out there like uh with a lot of people that do you know trying to show you how to use something like the basics and stuff like that but they're kind of poorly done i would say i'm not saying the videos of, like this video is just me like sitting at the staring at the parking lot i'm talking about like you're going to do a D the dsp video and stuff like that and you're actually showing you're doing it to show people how things work explain everything that you're doing right um because i shouldn't be able to, i shouldn't be correcting a, an installer ever i'm not an installer so just from me like reading and doing different things i shouldn't know more than what the freaking installer knows you know what i mean um i know you're not going to use what is it the lc1 or whatever the hell it is from uh from audio control i know you're not going to use that on a jeep or a toyota or like name it they pretty much have amp uh, the amp pros like for pretty much everything these days right or another form of an amp pro that does exactly the same thing right um um because right then and there i'm just like i was just what at that point in time i'm just like okay and it was kind of unprofessional too. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to bang on these guys, but you're doing a video. Why don't you take some time and actually do it properly? If you're showing, like if you're showing a system, it doesn't really matter, right? But if you're showing something, that's kind of like an educational thing. Why don't you do it properly? Don't have your machines going to die in two seconds while you're trying to imagine that I'm, I'm thinking the whole time crisis, but that's my car and that guy's working on it. I don't want to ever take my fucking vehicle there again. He seems like he's like do half ass in it the whole time. Oh, the, the battery thing's almost dead. What's that? Oh yeah, 30. Okay, well, we'll just set it at 30. Meanwhile, the guy's talking about uh, you got is it clipping at 35? Blah 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 blah. You know what I mean? Um to me that's like I said, I'm not I'm not the guy obviously knows his stuff, right? Um Skyser's his name on the on the forums. He's always like correcting people on there. So he obviously knows his stuff. But knowing your stuff and then know how to relay it is two different things, right? Um, but yeah, so I, when I do the DSP video, I'm going to try to do as much knowledge as I got put in there that I think is actually going to help people if they actually buy the product and they want to do it themselves. Um, show you as much as I know on it. And uh, I mean, it's pretty basic. Anybody that knows like car audio and you know DSPs, you're going to know the majority of it anyways because it's... Once you know one DSP, you can kind of transfer everything over to the next DSP anyways. You just got to find how it works. That's like the only difference. Um, and like I said, this is my first DSP, but I did a lot of reading and on a lot of different things on on these products that I bought before I bought them. And I read about a lot of the other products too out there, right? So um, anyways, like I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to harp on Nick or whatever. Um, but yeah, if you're going to do a video and it's going to be an for educational purposes, um, do it correctly. You know what I mean? Um, I think the best ones were the ones from hybrid audio guys, but those like five years ago. Right. And then the software has changed, even though it's pretty much the same idea. Um, but I thought his videos were a little bit better. Nick's Nick's the ones with Nick and, uh, um, what's his name uh doug uh, they're okay but uh, i get i get, like i said i get it maybe you, you can't show too much because basically they want you to come there to get it tuned or whatever anyways right so they're not going to show you every, every little thing about everything uh on there um they're just going to show you like kind of like the basic stuff anyways but anyways i gotta go do some stuff so thanks for watching the video hit the like button uh, stay tuned for the Helix TSP um, video that I'll do on that, um, and I'll probably do I'll probably do one on the file, just kind of going through all the different features for car audio related. Because, like I said, every I mean it's pretty similar to the ones that people use. Because, like I said, everybody uses these for headsets. I don't. I don't listen to music at home on a headset. Never. 
um, I use it for the car. So I'll probably do something that's like more car, car related for these things. I'm surprised these aren't as popular uh, out there as they probably should be. Um, but then it, once again, it's people, usually most people are gonna get these if you have a higher end system. Um, normally, chances are you're probably not gonna buy one of these unless you're like one of those guys that does like to listen to like headphone music and stuff at home. I don't, but then you probably get one. But for car audio purposes, I'll probably do a video on that and those two things. And uh, that's pretty much it. Anyways, thanks guys. Have a good day. Take care. Bye.